In a headline, Spot Small Secondary School student tops CXC CSEC exams, new road coming for farmers in car home, and CSEC results prove exceptional increase in subject passes. Hello and welcome to National Focus. I'm Priska Julian. Stay tuned for details of headlines, stories, and others coming up. Welcome back. A student from the Portsmouth Secondary School has topped the CXC C6 exams. On Wednesday, it was announced that Charles Gilbert was a top student from the Portsmouth Secondary School, while the Convent High School was the overall top school. Britanna George of Portsmouth Secondary, 10 ones. Grace Etienne of Convent High School, 10 ones and 1-2. One and the top one, a moment of silence. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Gilbert of Portsmouth Secondary School, 10 ones and two twos. 11 students received nine ones and other passes. Lizelle Jervier, nine ones, Arthur Waldron, seven days Adventist. Shania Edwards, nine ones, Convent High School. Kian Benjamin, nine ones, Convent High School. Megan Luke of Convent High School, 9113. Makela Bedno, Convent High School, 9113. Shania Carbon of Arthur Waldron, 7 Days Adventist, 9 ones and 1 2. Selena Victor of Portsmouth Secondary, 9 ones, 1 2. Alia Plasimon of Portsmouth Secondary, 9 ones, 1 2. Nicole Vigilant of Casabrus Secondary, 9 ones, 1 2. Joyska George of Portsmouth Secondary, 9 ones and 2 twos. Bethany Vital of Convent High School, 9 ones, 2 twos, 2 threes. The Chief Education Officer also made special mention of the secondary schools who excelled. Schools like the Convent High School with a pass rate of 90%, 97%, and St. John's Academy, with a pass rate of 95%, continued on their excellent path. And we commend them for remaining there, and we were happy to see that 11 of the 15 schools showed increases in their percentage pass rate. I make special mention of Dominica Community High School, with an increase of 13 percentage points. St. Martin Secondary School with 12, Dominica Grammar School with 9, and Arthur Waldron Seven Adventist School with an increase of 8 percentage points. Other schools that have increased their percentage pass rate are Casablu Secondary, Northeast Comprehensive, Portsmouth Secondary and Pierre Child Secondary. In related news, on Wednesday morning, the Ministry of Education at a press conference officially released the results of Dominican students who took the May-June sitting of the Caribbean Secondary Education Certification exams. This year, the ministry reported a marked increase in the number of students who passed five or more subjects, as well as a significant jump in students acing the mathematics and English language exams. This year, our analysis of the CSEC results indicates an upward trend in almost all areas. We saw increases in the overall percentage pass and in language and mathematics, two very critical subject areas which we monitor very closely. More students pass five or more subjects, including English and math. We had more subject passes at 80% and above, 21 this year compared to 21 last year. And our students surpassed the regional average in 31 out of the 33 subjects that they sat. It was noted that the Western High School has been on a steady rise in their percentage for the past five years. The St. Martin Secondary School obtained 100% pass mark in the English and Mathematics CXC exams. Dominica scored 100% in 10 of the attempted subjects and 80 to 100% pass rate was obtained in 15 out of the 31 subjects. Dominica submitted 779 candidates for the CSEC exams, 90 students less than 2017. Officials of the Ministry of Education are especially pleased with the marked increase in the average point for mathematics and English language.
We examine performance in two critical areas, English A and mathematics. SBA components for these two subjects were introduced for the first time in 2018. We are happy to report a 9.3 percentage point increase in English A for 2018. Performance moved from 79.4% in 2017 to 85.3% in 2018. It also showed an increase of 13.6% from the regional average of 71.7%. Good things are happening at our schools. The Advanced Caribbean Proficiency Exam, CAPE, currently taken by private candidates, also was an area where Dominica excelled. 79 candidates wrote the CAPE exams this year, which comprises of 62 females and 17 males. Most of the CAPE subjects are offered in Units 1 and 2, except for the three core subjects, which are Caribbean Studies, Communication Studies, and Integrated Mathematics, which are single-unit courses. Candidates sat 13 double-unit CAPE subjects and five single-unit subjects, which gave a total of 31 subjects. The data shows that Dominica scored 100% in 10 of the attempted subjects. 80 to 100 percent pass rate was obtained for 15 out of the 31 subjects. This news time, government is embarking on a project to restore the feeder road in car home to give farmers of the area a chance of easier access to their farms after the heavy rains of tropical storm Erica and Hurricane Maria washed off sections of the road. On Wednesday, the Honorable Member of Parliament for the St. Joseph constituency, Kel Vadaru, officials of the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Fisheries, and the Ministry of Public Works, as well as the farmers of the St. Joseph area, toured the site where $2 million will be spent to restore this very important road. This is one of the most productive areas in the St. Joseph constituency, and quite a number of farmers from the St. Joseph community, from Miro and from Salisbury, the farmers have their farms in this area. And <clears throat> for the last few months, the, the road network has been a state that, was, that has not been really um, conducive to the farmers. Of course, the government has done several interventions here before. Um, since I became a member of Parliament for the area, we spent over $3 million on this road at various sections to improve the road. However, after the, the rains from Tropical Storm Erica, and also the, <coughs> the, the rains from Hurricane Maria as well. We, uh, we have some major, major road failures in the area. The Member of Parliament commended the farmers in the area for their patience and understanding while plans to restore the road is ongoing. I believe the farmers have, have understood the situation as it relates to the impact that has taken place here, particularly after Hurricane Maria and the, the major failure that we, have, we, we can see here as well. And I believe moving forward, is, is we have to continue to keep in coming contact with the farmers to ensure that there is proper communication, keep them abreast as to the developments. And the Ministry of Public Works really has to push in terms of getting the designs and also speaking to the landowners for the acquisition of some of the lands that we will have to acquire to cut a new road. Residents of Marigat constituency left in need of housing from the destruction of Hurricane Maria are receiving new homes thanks to the Hands Charity Organization and collaboration with caretaker of the constituency, Dayton Baptist. Last week, GIS News visited one of the sites where a new home was being constructed for a family of six. Dayton Baptist reported that this type of structure, though wooden, is expected to withstand any event of major winds and extreme weather. What we're doing today is that uh, we're assembling a two-bedroom kitchen and bathroom house for one of our person in Margaret here, which is Zara. Um, She's very fortunate to have this sort of home constructing for her this time. I can say it's a long time in Dominica we have not seen this sort of um, construction going on, so we want to say thanks to the team for bringing back that sort of um, construction to Dominica. I believe with that sort of construction we should be able to withstand some heavy winds and I feel comfortable that she should be in a better place in case a hurricane should come. He hopes that through this organization or others, more homes can be constructed for the people of this constituency in need. The numbers are increasing. It's like we need about maybe 50 homes here because I have still people in shelter up to this minute and we are trying to see as much we can get to take them out of shelter as soon as possible. So the more we can get is the better for us. So I'm trying to 
and see if we can acquire some more so that we can get some more families into their homes. Baptist explained that currently two houses are being built with another two to begin soon after when funding is made available by the Switzerland-based organization. We've been working together for a while now and we really want to say thanks to her and thanks to the team again from, Venice, from Switzerland. Thanks also to the Prime Minister for giving us um, the concessions on these materials so that we can get the homes up for this family. And finally, this news time, with the devastation of Hurricane Maria leaving several primary and secondary schools across the island destroyed, the Ministry of Education has been left in a position of seeking to repair or rebuild schools. In efforts of ensuring all schools are restored and fully functional, at a press conference on Wednesday, the Chief Education Officer, Melina Fontaine, listed the schools being targeted by the Ministry for either rehabilitation or rebuilding. Schools for Kalibishi, um, Thibault, um, Major Works for W.S. Stevens, New School for Bellevue to take in Petit Savan, Major works for Grand Bay Sec and Primary. New school for Tetmon because that school was completely destroyed. Maho, almost new school. Salisbury, almost new school. Monjon, almost new school. Goodwill, new school. That's all for this edition of National Focus. Be sure to follow GIS on facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow us on Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts in our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here in the GIS News production team, I'm Priska Julian. Thanks for watching.